So yes, please join your hands as we welcome Sister Joy. She comes to bring the word of God. And uh, before she does, I'd like, just like to pray for you. Come. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time, Lord. Oh, Father, Lord, we come, Lord, at this time, Lord, to receive your word, Lord. Bless us, Lord. He was listening ears, Lord. Let nothing distract us, Lord Jesus. Let us help us to focus on you and your word, Lord. And but Father, Lord, we, we ask you to bless our dear sister, Lord Jesus. Lord, fill her with your spirit, Lord. She might have prepared many things, Lord. But Lord, it is you, Lord, who would take charge over her, Lord. And you fill her with your spirit, Lord. And every, every word which comes out of her mouth, Lord, would be your word, Lord Jesus. To reaching out to your people, including her, Lord. So Lord, we thank you and we just summon this time into your hands, Lord. In your name, Lord, we say. Amen. 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 You don't have a mic? Okay, but okay, this one. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. First of all, I want to congratulate you that. Because honestly, and I'll tell you how it all happened. You have a praying mother. Mm -hmm. You have a praying mother. Because that's what my son acknowledged. And I think it's important to acknowledge all the praying mothers here because truly every child, every blessing that you can see in your life is a mother on her knees and we, we aren't strong we are actually very weak at times because I know the fears and the doubts and the challenges we as mothers have gone through but if it wasn't for the grace of God and just knowing that his promises are yay and amen and we just get down to it and praying fathers all right I know the fathers here are also amazing but just know that it is your parents who, it's like God in heaven looking upon us, and he's using the parents as vessels to just bless the children, to love the children, and show you his grace. Because I know my son has always said, Mom, if it wasn't for your prayers, and I said, Son, I never could pray, but I just was so, how do I put it? I, I, I don't want to use the word desperate, but yes, I was, you know, I was desperate. And I knew, I just knew that I had a God that loved me and my child enough, so much, more than a, exceedingly abundantly beyond what I can think or ask for, because that's how He loves us. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, um, it's amazing. I, I, I always get the opportunity to continue the message. The message, last time also <laughs> yeah. was one in Christ, the message continues, is because God is just so gracious to allow me to follow Pastor and the, the next message. And every message that Pastor has spoken, especially in this series, because we are in a wonderful series right now, One in Christ. One in Christ. We've gone through weeks. And in this journey, I think you've all seen how we explore that who we are in Christ, what, we, what it means to be one in Christ. We talked about being in a body, that everybody is important in this body, that we all have contributions to be made to this body, how we can up those contributions, how we can develop those contributions, how we can build this body and be obedient. And I think last week we, Pastor, introduced the concept of the bride. And it was, it was very nice to see that he's so vulnerable to share, you know, I wasn't comfortable being called the bride, I, I, those who really remember. You know, it, it, it takes great humility to be vulnerable. Remember that. Anybody who is willing to share their weakness, you should applaud them. Or share their doubts, you should applaud them. And that's part of being in the body. And I think when Pastor shared about being, you know, how does a man call himself a bride? And, you know, it's important we realize that the concepts of what God wants in the Bible is universal. It's for all of us. And we must not limit God with our limited understanding with our thinking that this is this, A is A, B is B, because in God's mind, time, like a day could be a thousand years, a moment could be eternity for Him. His plans are higher than our plans, His ways are higher than our ways. And I think what one thing very important that Pastor brought up was the fact that as a bride of Christ, because He, he shared with us that we are already His bride, the Word of God says so, but so often, 
he used the word prodigal bride, prodigal daughter. It shook me a little bit because, you know, when you think about it, we are brides, but we are prodigal brides. What does that mean? What did it make you feel, for those who heard it? Can I ask, what did it make you feel when pastor said, we are the prodigal bride, or we are the prodigal daughter? How did it make you feel? Nice? Not nice? Want to ask a question? Wondered? What did it make you feel? It didn't make me feel. Yes, sorry, it's just deep up there. It's strange. Strange? Yes. That's a. Why strange? Because we feel always that uh, as the bride, at first time listening, always I, I feel myself I'm this a daughter of God. Right. So when I hear the. Uh, bright first of all, I felt strange. Right. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Well, I think what Pastor was trying to say is, we actually, like we all said, we're sons and daughters of God, we're children of God. We know who we are in God. We know that we belong to a body. That's been established. That's very clear. <coughs> we're established. We are part of a church. We, we believe in God. We've been you know, baptized. We've saved. We, we call upon the name of the Lord. But my question is... Oh, Last one, yeah. Yeah, okay. You're a bride. So what? What does it mean to be a bride? I mean, for those of us who are married, we go through the process. Uh, whether a bridegroom or a bride, we went through a process. What was that process? Can some of you share with me? Just the, the general. I'm not talking about specifics, what date you got married or, you know. Um, what, was, what was the process? The vows. Okay. Before the marriage, towards the marriage. Let's talk about towards the marriage. Okay, preparations. Preparations. What else? Anxiety. 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 Very mm -hmm. good. What else? Boys, listen, you'll kill the money. <laughs> huh? The money. Money. Finance. Sleepless yeah. night. Sleepless yeah. night. Very good. <laughs> Expectations. Expectations. There are a lot of things that go on from the time some two people meet and decide they are going to take the step until the point of marriage. There's a lot going on. So it's not simply say, I love you, and then you're married. No, there is a lot of problems. There are elders involved, there are people involved, there are customs involved, there are processes involved. So it's not as simple as just saying, I'm going to be a bride or I'm going to be a bridegroom, correct? So I think what I want to share today is about understanding your role and responsibilities of marriage, of being a bride, of that, that position that you take. So I want to go back, see, I want to go back to a Jewish customs of marriage because I think it's very important you see it in the way that God intended. Pastor used the word betrothal. The Hebrew word is kiddushin. Okay, so when we drink of the cup of wine, you know, in in the Holy Communion, the Jewish people call it kiddush. It is the cup of wine. All right. Now, in a Jewish marriage. There is, of course, the betrothal. That's the part one, where a pastor had already talk of, spoken about last week. And then the groom goes and prepares, because he's going to get everything ready for the bride. But pastor spoke about betrothal. But do you know, at the point of betrothal, you are actually already married? You have not consummated your marriage. That will happen when he comes back. But in the eyes of God, you are already married. That means? You have both. With this ring, you are consecrated. Do you know what consecrated means? Union. Union. Actually, it's a stronger word. Belong. You belong to me. When the couple, when the couple decide in, in the Jewish customs, first of all, what he does is he picks up a cup of wine. Of course, it's everything is spoken of, everything is discuss. It's not just two people say, I love you, and then come together. Because a lot of elders are involved, a lot of people are consulted and decided, things are thought through very carefully, they agree. But the first step is the cup of wine. 
the bridegroom actually drinks from the cup of wine and he passes it to the bride. And she has the choice not to drink. It's free will. Remember something. Our God is a gentleman. Our God has always said, I ask. He has never forced. Not even salvation is forced upon us. He invites us. He, he requests us. He shows his, us his love. And he says, come. Come away with me. So the bride can say, no, I choose not to drink. And that's over. But the minute she takes the cup and says, I drink, that means she says, what you say, I agree. Is that so beautiful? Is that what the Master has done, even at the Last Supper? He says, take this body. I'm giving you my body. I'm giving you my blood. Take it. Because he's asking out of free will. Join me as the bride. Join me as the bride. He's not saying you have to. He has never in Scripture says you have to do anything. He's always asked. And so, the bride takes the cup, drinks. Of course, everybody's happy. Everybody's amazed that, yes, they've agreed. Then, he puts a ring on the index finger. And honestly, the minute he puts this ring on the finger, he says, with this ring, you are consecrated to me under the laws of Moses and Israel. Means, you, under the witness of God himself, you are consecrated to me. That means there's no going back. You are mine already. You're not going to belong to anyone else. You belong to me. And last and most beautiful, do you know in Jewish customs, the man pays the bride price? Not like our Indian system where the women pay. The man pays. But the betrothal does not end until this document is signed. It's called the ketubah. It's a marriage contract. He actually writes down everything he promises to do for his wife. He writes it down. I promise to do this. I promise to provide you this. I promise to give you this. I promise, I promise, I promise. He's the one who signs it first. And then she will sign it. Isn't it the, what scripture is? Scripture is his contract to us, his blessing to us. He writes down everything he promises to do for you in scripture. And when we pick up scripture and say, yes, Lord, I agree, amen, I believe, I know you are true, I know you will do this, Lord, you are God, you are holy, then that's what comes through, is that we are agreeing that that's the marriage contract. We are agreeing that, yes, Lord, you are my God, and I am your husband, and you are my wife, right? So isn't it amazing that, can you imagine that ceremony, how beautiful it is? It's like I said, it's it's not just saying I love you. They actually never say I love you. It's not in the words that you show someone you love them. It's in the action. It's in what you do. It's in how you behave. That's why when pastor said so many of us have become the prodigal bride, it's because we agree. We when, we, when salvation came to us, yes, Lord, you are our Lord. You are our God. You are everything to us. But what happens while we're waiting for His return? Are we still that bride that is committed to him? Are we still that bride that is consecrated to him? Yes, please. Yes, uh, suddenly I forgot completely. Suddenly it came to me in Catholic Church. The priest and the nuns also said the same. They wear the rings. They consider they married to mm -hmm. Christ. Yeah. They, you can see they're wearing the rings. Yeah. As you said, you know, so yeah. Yeah, they're the bride and they're the... Yeah. So, Consecration is a very powerful word, and it's not to be taken lightly. When God says, you are betrothed to me, sorry, for I am jealous for you with godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. What does chaste virgin mean? It means pure. It means unadulterated. It means someone who has said, okay, I have kept myself for the Lord. I am not going to be plagued by the world. I live in the world. I have to wait for my bridegroom's return. I'm not, I'm not asking none of us to be monks sitting in a house all by themselves and not meeting anybody. That's not what 
what God is asking for. Because if you keep your heart pure and you keep your mind clean and say, Lord, I belong to you. In your Yes, of course, like Sister Deepa says, the nuns and the priests consecrate in a very extreme way. You know, they literally live in a monastery and they don't do much. But we as children of God, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, we are to live in the world, but we are not to be of the world. Correct? We are, we belong to Christ. His name is written on us. It says in scripture, our names are engraved on his hand. That means to each one, he knows Shopa. He knows Deepa. He knows Anti. He knows Karthik. He knows Kamal. He knows each one by name. Each one of you, he has said, you have said you are willing to come and be betrothed to me. You are mine. And he surrounds you with a godly jealousy. Do you know if someone comes against you, he's going to fight for you. If someone tries to plague your mind, he's going to come and fight for you. That's so important for you to remember. It's not just saying, Lord, I believe, and now I have salvation. We are all preparing ourselves for his return. And in this time, we don't know when it will be. But in this time, we always have to be ready. We cannot be so silly to think that, okay, I am a bride and I just have to be demure. I have to be um, just kept my way and that's enough. It isn't enough. Sorry, why do I do that? Do you know, a bride is not just one who is dressed in a white veil, pretty, looking ready. Not at all. We live in this world, and it's a very dark world. It's a very difficult world, very challenging world. A world that plagues our mind with so many thoughts, so many doubts, so much unbelief, so much concern. Pray for our children, pray for finance, pray for jobs, pray for so many things. Every day we're bombarded. Today it's COVID, tomorrow it's different things. We are bombarded every day. The Word of God is very clear. When you are a bride, you are not just sitting at home waiting for the bridegroom. Do you know in the Jewish customs, there's a beautiful thing. When the bridegroom goes to the father's house to prepare, he says, I go to my father's house and I prepare the mansion for you. I will return. But often it says that you will not know the day or the hour. You don't know when your bridegroom is returning. So what does he do? He sends you his friend, the Holy Spirit. He sends you a very precious friend who watches over you day in and day out because the friend's duty is to protect the bride and to ensure the bride is okay and always kept ready for the bridegroom. And this powerful friend is the Holy Spirit. Imagine if we didn't have the Holy Spirit guiding us, comforting us, correcting us, teaching us, walking with us, we would have all fallen already. Trust me, I have fallen many times. And if it wasn't for the grace of God or the Spirit of God that brought me up time and time again, and I'm thankful the bridegroom is so concerned for me that he sent me this wonderful friend to be with me. But what he tells us is not just be a demure bride. Do you know the, or, 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 the idea of bridegroom, uh, sorry, the idea of a warrior bride is from the beginning. In Genesis 2, we've always read this verse. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help me for him. Now, ladies, what, what do you think that means? Or, or gentlemen as well. What is, what is a help me in your, in your thoughts? Partner. Partner? What else? This part. What else? Okay, husbands, tell me what do you think your wives are to you? Support. Support. Friend, uh -huh. friend support. Brother Kamal? Friends. Friends, okay. So wives, what are you to your husbands? Everything. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Good attitude, everything, yeah. Okay, other wives, please tell me. What are you to your husband? Companions. Companions. Let me tell you what the Hebrew word means. Ezer. That's the Hebrew word used for helpmate. And it just doesn't mean just companion or friend. The word used there is warrior. 
Do you know God knew that Adam needed a warrior? That helpmeet is not just a friend, not just a companion, not just everything. He, she's more than that. She is supposed to be a warrior because she knows, God knows, that in the time that Adam has to come through in his life, he needs someone who will fight, a second in command. That's who the bride is, the second in command. When a general goes out to fight, he always has a second in command. And that second in command knows everything what the general is thinking and will perform in case the general is unable to perform. She doesn't just accompany him or just follows him. She knows every tactic. She knows everything that needs to be done. And she will do it if it is needed. And she is a warrior. So God did not create us as demure brides. God has prepared us to be warrior brides. When we read the word of God, when we know the word of God, we can dare say when the enemy comes to us, no weapon formed against us can prosper. No weapon. Because that's what the word of God has told me. And I am a warrior bride of Christ. I'm not just a simple demure bride. I am a warrior bride of Christ. Because that's the word of God. That is what God has told me. Do you know why he says, that's why, um, can I ask Vedant Karthik to open Ephesians 6? Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand from then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. Okay. And, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kind of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Amen. Why would God tell us to understand what is the full armor of God? If we're just supposed to be demure brides sitting and waiting for Him, why? Because He knows the battle is on. Every day we are fighting a battle in different fronts. Like I said, finance, health, emotions, relationships, society, environment, geographics, politics, national. There's so many fights we're fighting every day. What I'm going to ask is for you to really meditate on Ephesians 6. He has pinpointed everything that you need. Everything. Veda, can you repeat the whole? I, I read very slowly and read very clearly again because I need, I need you to hear every word that is spoken. From 13. From 13, please. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. One moment. Full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with, it, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil ones. Amen. He's taught us everything that we can do. And he tells us clearly in the day of evil that you can stand strong. He's telling you in advance. He's not promising glory days every day. He never said, I am going to give you perfect days every day. But I will give you the grace and the strength to come through it. That's amen. his promise. Yes, and he tells us very clearly... What are the things you need to do? But if you look at the armor of God, what is one thing that isn't there? He protects our head, our belt, our feet, our breastplate. We have a shield of faith. What isn't protected? Our backs. There's nothing for our back. Do you know why there's nothing for our back? Because you're supposed to be behind me. We're supposed to be behind each other. As the bride of Christ, as a warrior bride of Christ, you are not fighting this battle alone. You are being equipped by the Word of God. 
You are walking with the Holy Spirit who guides you, and you have each other. We don't go into this battle alone. We are not the bride alone. We are a body who is the bride, and therefore our backs. We have to watch each other's back. Have you seen in some battles, they're back-to-back -back fighting? Because they're going to watch each other's back? Do you know how important it is as a bride that we, are, we remember? We're not fighting this battle alone. We need to fight with each other, and we need to have each other's back. Can we make a promise today to have each other's back? Because trust me, when the, the real battle comes, if you don't have each other's back, the devil knows, and he's going to go straight for your back. Because you can have everything. You can have been prayed through, you can have faith, you can have truth, you can have everything. Your back is exposed. Make sure it's covered. Make sure you have each other's back. I never understood have each other's back until I, I watched some war movies and then I read this. And God said, remember you watched and that scene you saw two people fighting back to back? Ah, oh, Lord, yes. Let's promise to have each other's back. It's not just in the good days. It's in the bad days too. It's in the difficult days too. Would you like to be a warrior bride of Christ? Do you think you are a warrior bride of Christ? I think I'm a warrior bride of Christ in progress. Mm -hmm. I still got a lot of, you know, learning to do, understanding, but it's okay. We have until he returns. Of course, we don't know when he returns. It could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be years from now. But if our mindset is always ready, do you know the military, if they are always on alert, they're always, unless they're rested, but if that, that platoon or whoever they're called, they are on duty, they are on duty. They don't think about anything else. Do you know God is so good, so good? I was talking about the betrothal, right? Do you know men who are betrothed and not yet married don't have to go to battle in the Jewish custom? Do you know why? Because God knows. That man is waiting to be married. He's preparing, waiting to be... What if his mind is on the bride and not on, his, on, on the war? God is so good in the Jewish custom. Can you imagine? When I read it, I was very surprised. I thought every man had to serve. Like in Singapore, every man has to serve. But God knows our hearts. God understands our hearts who's ready or when they will be ready, when that person should put on the full armor, when that person needs to go to battle. He prepares, he knows the end from the beginning. So even in the customs, he's prepared because he knows we have such weak hearts. But by his grace, our hearts are strengthened. The Holy Spirit guides us and strengthens our heart. It's such a beautiful gesture for God to think. Of course, once he's married and he's consummated, he has to go to battle if the battle is called. Right? So that is how good our God is. And so I want to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, are you willing to truly be a warrior bride of Christ? It's something to reflect on. Because it's not easy. It is not easy. It's a daily thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process that you have to grow and understand. Because like I said, last week some of us were still trying to figure out what do you mean being a bride? You know, from being one in Christ, to body in Christ, and now bride in Christ. It's a process. That's why I think, Pastor, the Lord has brought into Pastor's heart that this series has to keep going. Because until we learn all the facets and all the tangents that God wants to expose to us, we won't be ready. So I want to share with you one of the greatest women of God that I know about. Have any of you read Judges 4? Okay, the book of Judges. See, in the times of Israel, before King Saul, there were judges. Because they didn't believe in having a king. God had judges lead the people. God had judges watch over the people. Because they needed a council, should there be problems. Should there be situations where they needed wisdom. Where they needed, you know, queries or how to settle a, a problem. So they had judges. Now Deborah was a lady, a woman. She was a wife. She was a wife, but she was also a prophetess. She was an amazing prophetess. She would be able, you know, she was able to speak unto the people and bless them. 
and she became one. She became the only female judge in the Bible. And when the judge sat, like now in court, when the judge seats, everybody listens, and the judge will pronounce his verdict. I want to. When you get a moment, when you go home, please read Judges four. It's very important because Judges four is the time when Israel, as a people, had again sinned against God. We read about Israel sinning many times, but that's the same for us. We must never blame that only Israel sinned, we are sinning too. We are not sinners, but we fall into sin. We make mistakes. And at this moment in the history, is Israel had it again fallen into sin. And the battle was coming. She was a prophetess, she was a judge, but she was not the leader. She was not the leader. She was, she was courageous. What I'm going to share with you are seven qualities I think a warrior bride needs. And that's why I use Deborah as an example, because she showed, she reflected these seven qualities that are so important. Like I said, it was a very, very difficult time, because Israel was being bombarded by the enemies. She was ready. She was courageous. She was able, she was called by God to lead at a different, difficult time. So like I said, the second in command, the Ezer, the bride, you have to be ready in a difficult time. That's why you need to be prepared. You know, training. The, my, my son's been in the army, so I know the kind of training he's been through. And trust me, it was really not nice in the beginning. And a lot of people tell me, why would you allow your son to be in the army? But I am so grateful he is. He was. The army training, the discipline, the hardship, and I think you heard what he said in his testimony, right? The officers were being trained by sergeants and were treated like dirt. But they were, because they were being prepared to be officers. And that same sergeant who really put him through the rings had to salute him. So being a warrior bride, you always have to be prepared. You have to be ready for the call. As soon as that horn is called, you are ready to go to battle. I'm sure you've seen a lot of movies. When the battle is called, the horn is blown, and everybody has to be ready. You're not going to sit there and say, OK, do I have the training? Do I know how to fire this weapon? Do I know what to do? No. You are always, always ready. Oh, sorry, no, 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 no. Good I don't hold a mic in my hand. <laughs> I'm just not used to doing this. She served with wisdom and knowledge. She was a judge. She used to come under a tree. And people would come to her with problems and ask, and ask for her judgment. So a warrior bride is not just about brute strength. Remember that. It's not just about going to the battle and saying, I'm going to fight this battle. It's knowing when. It's knowing how. It's knowing timing. Do you know the war is won when you really know timing? It's not just saying, okay, today I'm going to fight. Today I'm going to... You know, I have seen people who come into a situation and don't fully understand the power of the enemy and says, I rebuke you to the enemy. But sometimes the enemy can't overcome because they're not ready. They are not ready. So please always be ready with your timing. Understand. Have wisdom. Just don't say, because some people say, oh, I'm going to go. I have seen people just follow along with others and say, oh, you know, they're going to go. And uh, um, for lack of a better word, some people have been possessed. And they go and try and you know fight it. If you're not ready, don't do it. There are those who know what to do, and there are those who know how to do it. So let's be careful. We need wisdom as the warrior bride. God is training us. But even in, in the army, there are different, there's the gunnery, there are people who use the guns, there's the navy, there are different facets and tangents of the army, correct? Not everybody's on the forefront. Some are behind using the technology. Some are on the fighter jets. You know, there are different facets to an army, and there are different roles in an army. So let's be careful, because I have seen it go wrong many times when people are not ready and they try to fight a battle that is not theirs, or they try to just go along, oh, I'm a Christian brother, let me go. You pray through. Don't just do things because I'm a Christian, I have to do this. No, that's not what God asks you to do. God asks you to have wisdom. God asks you to know your timing. You are called for something in this kingdom. Like Pastor has said, we are called and each one of us have different roles to play. 
play our role well and the body will win, the bride will win. If you try to play someone else's role, the body will fail. God is very specific. God is a God of order. God is not a God of chaos. Please remember that. And, God, and Deborah, one amazing thing. Barak was the leader at that time, but Barak was weak. Barak didn't dare to go to battle. But she knew, I will support him. I'm not going to overtake him because the Lord has given the role to him to be the leader. He has to go to battle. But Barak actually said, if you don't go with me, I won't go. She said, sure, I will go with you. God has called you. You will get the victory. I will go with you. But you have to go. I'm not going to go on your behalf. That's also something a warrior bride must know and understand. That yes, they have a role and they have a position. There are some people who are supposed to go ahead and you're supposed to support them, not absorb them. So often as Christians, when we see an opportunity, sad to say, we try to absorb someone else because we think that we can do better. Let's not try and do that. Like I said, God is a God of order. In a battalion, in the army, there is order. Everyone has their role. Do not observe your leadership. Understand your leadership. Who is to lead? Even if your leader sometimes is weak, show him support. Show her support so that he or she can do the job. Because the leader also has their moments. They are not perfect. They are human. You are supposed to support your leader and say, look, you want to do this? I support you. But you have to go. You have to be the one who goes ahead. I will be, be behind you. And that is a very powerful trait of she was trusted. The people of God, the people of Israel, knew that they could go to her. They asked her, please do something, because Barak isn't moving. Please go and do something. And why would they go to her if they didn't trust her? Because they knew she had the wisdom, she had the ability. She would do the right thing. And she was direct. She told Barak, look, you go, I'll go with you. But because you're not doing it this on your own, I, you won't get the glory. That's what a warrior bride needs to do. Be direct and firm, not to be hurtful, not to be destructive, but to be firm and direct. Yes, you help, you support, you go. But be clear also, because it, of course it's not about, in this case it was about, so that he understands that, look, you, you have a role, you can do it. And God would have supported you even if I didn't go. But because you've asked me to go, now you don't get the glory. Of course, it might sound odd, why would she say that? But sometimes it's good to put things in perspective. As warrior brides, as brides of Christ, we have to be honest, but not hurtful. We have to be firm and direct, but not destructive. That is a quality we as the children of God, as the bride of Christ, we really need to learn. Because so I have seen in my life that people will, how do I say it, be nice, but they're not helping you. Because they see a problem, but they don't dare to speak up to you because they don't want to correct you. They don't want, the, and, then, and then what happens is this problem festers to a place where it can't be helped. Then what do we do? What do we do? So when there is a challenge you see within the body, within the bride, you can be, pray about it. No one's asking you to be so direct that you hurt someone, but pray about it. Ask for guidance. How do we tackle the situation? How do, because remember, if a cancer grows even in a small patch, it destroys the whole body. I share a story, my mom fell. My mom fell one night and she had a little bump. And she just thought it was a little bump. And it grew and it grew. She, you know, my mom was just so selfless. She just didn't care. She said, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. But it grew to be cancerous. And it had been cut off. But imagine, it was just a fall. And it was just seemed like a bump. But we were all, she was so, like I said, she was so selfless that we didn't even think. She said, she's okay, she's okay. Yes, our brothers and sisters can say they are okay. Nothing's wrong, there's no problem. But if you can obviously see there is a challenge or a concern, like I said, 
ask the pastor, pastor, shall we do something? Can we do something? We're not trying to interfere. We're not trying to say we need to get into someone's business. But they are part of us. Like I said, we've got to have each other's back. Maybe they cannot see what's going on because through their own challenges, we need to be there for each other. We need to have the love and grace and kindness to show, brother, sister, is something wrong? Can we help you? Can, can there be something that we can do? But if we all say, no, I'm not going to interfere, I'm not going to be involved, Barak would never have gone to battle. Israel would never have won. And she was confident. She said the battle belongs to God. Mm -hmm. I'm, I am just a servant. I'm ready. When you go to battle for any situation, where there was sister praying for Vedan, you went in, like I said, that's why I said in the beginning, I was desperate and I didn't know anything, but I know that my God would do it. Amen. I know that my God is able, willing, his promises are yea and amen. amen. So she went into battle saying that, not me, God, you do it. Every prayer we take to God, we're saying, God, you do it. We come with confidence. We come with love. We come with grace. Of course, if you're praying the wrong prayer, there's nothing to be said. But when you are praying a godly prayer, when you are praying in the Holy Spirit, when you are praying in the Word, when you are praying for the blessing for one another, God is with you. God is with you. And the greatest quality, imagine, can you imagine a warrior? You know, you've seen Wonder Woman or all those films that... You know, you've seen even generals, any. Do they often look humble to you? Because they're warriors, they're fighting. Great, they're, but truly, a true warrior is humble. Because she or he knows. He goes to the battle, she goes to the battle because God is with her or with him. This bride, this body of Christ can go to battle knowing that we have a God who goes before us. Amen. Knowing that it is not us. My son and I always pray this prayer, Lord, let your will be done, not ours. Because we are unable. Like I repeat, He is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we ask or even think. Because He knows, I will win the victory for you. And you have to trust me. Do you know faith takes humility? Trust takes humility. You can't trust someone if you're so proud because you'll say, I can do it, why do I need him? I'm able to, why do I need her? <coughs> so for you to put on trust and faith, you need to be humble. You need to be humble. And that's these seven qualities demonstrated by Deborah are the qualities of a true warrior bride. So, can I ask from this way? Uh, no. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Sister Neelan, you read the first and then Brother Kamal, and then all the seven. I want you to read it slow, slowly and remember the quality. Sister? Deborah was courageous. She was called by God to lead at a difficult time. Deborah served with wisdom and knowledge. Deborah supported the people God called to lead. Amen. Deborah was trusted. Amen. Deborah was direct. Amen. Deborah was confident. Amen. Deborah was humble. Yeah. Very important qualities. So, like I asked you earlier, are you willing to be a warrior bride? I believe you all already are. Like I am in progress. We are learning. We are growing every day. If we develop these qualities, we trust the Holy Spirit, we believe that until my Messiah comes, until his return, I will call upon his friend. Holy Spirit, I need your guidance in this. Holy Spirit, I need you to help me in this. Holy Spirit, direct me through this. Keep me humble. Let me be a woman, a man, to be able to trust, be trusted. Let me be someone who can be direct and firm in love. Let me be courageous. Be brave to face the situation. Let me have the wisdom to be able to know and discern the right hour and the right time. 
Let me not just go forth and do something. And let me support my leader. It could be your husband. It could be your boss at work. It could be your pastor. The one who God has put as your leader in your life in any aspect. Show support. Show that you are willing to back your leader. So we are all warrior brides in progress. Pastor had read this verse from Revelation 19 last week. Verse 7, he said, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. But I want to read from 6 to 9. Hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen are the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, write, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. Do you remember in Matthew 25 the parable of the ten virgins? Very simple parable that I believe all of you know. The moral of the story, there were ten, but only five were allowed in when the bridegroom returned. Remember one thing, you are betrothed. Your bridegroom will return, but you do not know the day nor the hour. Are you going to be one of the five virgins that has the oil lamps always filled and ready? Or are you going to be one of the other five virgins who is never ready? What do you choose? I want to be one of the five. Because when my bridegroom comes and my oil lamp is ready, he will see me. Do you know he says, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Blessed are those who are called. Do you know when you are called, what is the second part to being called? Respond. I can keep saying, sister, sister, and you can look away and never look at me. I can call all I want, but you can ignore me totally. When he says, blessed are those who are called, he's also saying, Blessed are those who responded. Blessed are those who are ready. Blessed are those that I will, I will prepare her to fly, find the linen. That fine linen is your righteous acts. As a warrior bride, as the bride of Christ, your life has to be filled with righteous acts. The Lord wants to adorn you. The Lord wants to bless you. Do you know how ready He is to return? But his bride is not ready. We are not ready. Are we able to welcome our king at this moment? No, we're not. That's why he's held in heaven waiting for us. Can you imagine? We are the reason for his delay. As a bride, I want my bridegroom to come soon. But I'm the one delaying him. And it's a very sad fact, but it is truth. So let's continue. Let's, this, let's not be warrior brides or brides of Christ in progress. Let's be brides of Christ. He's inviting you today. And it's a beautiful invitation. It's an invitation with so much love and so much promise and so much of himself. Are you going to respond? Are you going to be part of this bridal party? Are you going to be the one with oil in your lamp, ready for his return? He sent out the invitation already. My dear brothers and sisters, bride of Christ, he is returning soon, so be ready. Amen. Amen. We are all of us are body bright. Thank you, sister, for so so much for that lovely insight. And were you blessed by the way by the word? Yes. You are also blessed, right? You know, uh, God is doing something. Amen. He is doing something. Yes. And that's why I mean, uh, the things which are just coming up 
revelations which are coming up through the messages. Uh, they, these are not ordinary messages. I mean, just like the sake of saying, they are not being said. But God is putting power in them, a meaning behind it. And that is the reason when we look into the Bible, new, new, new truths are being revealed to us. So really, really, uh, thank you so much for that lovely word. And yes, we are all bright. We are all warrior bright. And we are, we, we need to prepare ourselves. We need to be ready. We don't know when he comes, but he will come. That's certain, done with. He will return. Amen. And it's for our good only that we are, we should be ready to Amen. receive him. Amen. Right? So, uh, shall we all start? And before we, before we uh, 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 do the closing prayer, shall we say the Lord's prayer first and then I will say the closing prayer? Okay, so let's say the Lord's prayer first. One, two, three. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and 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 the power, one, two, three. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord. Thank you for your presence here, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for, your, for the revelations that you are bringing into this church, Lord Jesus. Yes. But it all shows that you are preparing us, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are preparing each one of us, Lord. Yes. To be your bride, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. To be a worthy bride, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, Lord, we know that you are coming, Lord. You are coming soon, Lord. Help us, Lord, to, to, to be ready, Lord, when you do come, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, we will not be like the like the five virgins, Lord, who didn't have enough oil in their lamps, Lord. Yes, Lord. But we would be the ones, Lord, yes. who would be ready, Lord, yes, Lord, to receive you when you do come, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you are doing in our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this sermon series, Lord Jesus. Yes, this is uh, such a revelation to each one of us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful things, oh Lord, that you have written, Lord, thank you, Jesus. In, 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 in scriptures, Lord Jesus. Yes, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Father, Lord, as we close today's service, Lord, we thank you for your presence here, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And as we go back our ways, Lord, we ask for your presence to be with us, Lord. Thank Keep you, Jesus. us keeping us safe and protected, Lord. Yes, and Lord, people who are not here today, Lord, Lord, we ask you, Lord, bless them, Lord, enable us, Lord, to reach out to them, Lord, you, Lord, with your word, Lord, Thank with you, Lord. your blessing, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, uh, allow them, Lord, that they would be able to come next Sunday, Lord yes, Jesus. Lord. Yes. Create a stirring in their hearts, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. That they are missing something big, Lord. Yes, Lord. And bring them here, Lord. Yes, Lord. But Father, Lord, uh, this coming week, Lord, we just submit it to your hands. Yes, Lord. Have it your way, Lord. Yes, Let your will be done in our lives, Lord. Yes, Lord. The lives of our loved ones, Lord. The lives yes, of our family members, Lord. Yes, yes our Father, Lord. We just lift everyone to you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, as we just will be going for some uh, fellowship, Lord, we ask for your blessings to rest with the food, Lord. We thank you, yes, Lord. 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 Yes, and Auntie, Lord, for, for providing today, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask to bless them, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. The abundance with good health, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Mm. We thank you, Jesus. In your name, Lord, we say. Amen. 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 Let's give a clap of hand to our family. <laughs> All right, so God bless you and have a wonderful week and uh, be in touch with each other. God bless you all. <laughs>